5%, while the shootings of whites have flatlined. In fact, an officer is 18.5 times more likely to be shot by a black man than an unarmed black man is to be killed by a cop. When this happens, it is rare. We should deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis and not act as if this is some sort of reflection of how cops are all across America. They've never been better trained. They've never been better edu educated. They've never been trained in more de-escalation tactics than ever. The police department is not an institutionalized racist department, and that's what's causing all these people to do it. Hey, the hey, second thing hey, is Larry, the assumption the police I Department, Larry, the police department retreated last night. They allowed their precinct right, to get on fire. They allowed all these places to be looted. They were right. nowhere to be found last night. And that's the second point, Sean. This would be one thing if this were burning it away. The, the main cop has been arrested, and they're still rioting. This has nothing to do with police brutality, nothing to do with civil rights, everything to do with, with anger. And I believe if Donald Trump weren't in office, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, the president was very clear, Leo Terrell, that if the governor and the mayor can't get this job done, they will. Uh, I don't see any enforcement of, and, and, and Leo, I'm not looking for a confrontation here, but I'm also not looking for a replay of all we witnessed last night, now in multiple cities around the country. And the police said, uh, the president said he would send all the support and he will stop the violence and protect the homes and protect the businesses that are being looted and vandalized and burned to the ground. Well, you know what, uh, President Trump, I salute you. You need to federalize the National Guard because he's Democratic governor in Minnesota. He's not taking action. You need to federalize these National Guard because there is no law and order in, as Larry pointed out, a progressive Democratic mayor, a Democratic governor in Minnesota. Nothing's happening on the state and local level. I think we need President Trump to step in and do something because these individuals, I want to be clear, as a civil rights attorney, these individuals are not protesting under the First Amendment. They are criminal. They should be arrested. Period. All right, stand by. We're going to try and get back to both Leo Terrell, uh, Larry Elder. We continue to monitor protests uh, around the country tonight. New York, Atlanta, things I am told uh, in, by my producer now heating up in Chicago. We're seeing the current images now in Minneapolis. And it's rioters now even taking over that police precinct. Uh, how in the world do you let rioters take over a police station? Why didn't the city's Democratic mayor and governor do anything about this? They, they literally backed away. Anyway, we're now checking in. We'll go back to Mike Tobin in a second. But first, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you dealt with some tough days in, in New York City, your years as mayor. Uh, with all of this. Mr. Mayor, I can't imagine knowing you, having been friends with you for a few decades, for a couple of decades now, that you would ever allow what happened last night to happen again. First person who threw a brick would have been arrested. The second person who burned a car would have been arrested. The third person who tried to hurt somebody would have been arrested and it would have been over. And the statement to them would be, push it any further and try me and you're, not, you're going to regret it. I, I, I inherited a city that had had two major riots for eight days. And I left the city in eight years, no riots, even though we had some very, very controversial police shootings. You just didn't riot under me, Bratton, Safer, and uh, Bernie Carrick. I'm sorry, they never even tried. So w what should happen here, uh, well, what should happen here is somebody should take over. Progressive Democrats are incapable of keeping their people safe because they have criminal friendly policies that are pathetic, that are dangerous, and now we are seeing the result, not only there, but watch the cities that start burning. They're all going to be run by so-called progressive, idiot Democrats who let criminals out of jail, who set bail for murderers, and who encourage exactly this kind of thing. Giving up a police precinct, the mayor should resign. Uh, uh, Telling uh, uh, police officers to flee a precinct, he should resign and be replaced by somebody who can protect his people. The governor should resign because he's had four days to protect his people. He is not doing it. This is about protecting people's property and protecting people's lives. One man has died already. How many more are going to die before somebody starts to protect the people of Minnesota, Minneapolis, the people of Atlanta, the people of New York, de Blasio is just as incapable of doing it. And just as fawning as far as criminals are concerned. 
Mr. Mayor, stay right there. Because there is no one who feels more strongly about the killing of Mr. Floyd than I do. I think it's outrageous what happened. A terribly trained police department, whoever said that police department is well trained, has no idea what they're talking about. What you saw on the streets of Minneapolis could never have happened if it was a well trained police department. At least five major violations. At least five by those cops. Mr. Mayor, I'm looking at these images, and by the way, your former chief of police in New York also ran the correction center. Bernie Kerrick is also with us, uh, apparently with some breaking news, but, you know, 37 minutes ago, Bernie Kerrick, this this curfew went, to, went into effect. Uh, nobody's listening, Bernie, and I don't see cops making any maneuvers that I would have expected that the mayor is, is rightly describing things that you did and he did as mayor and you as police chief. Yeah, Sean, uh, you know, I, I want to touch on something the mayor said real quick. Uh, you know, he talked about, you know, the leadership now that they can't control their cities now. Every one of these cities where you see these riots, you'll notice that those mayors can't keep those cities less violent without, they have the highest violence rates, they have the highest murder rates, they have poverty, low income uh, housing, uh, you know, it's just atrocious management and leadership without the riots. Yeah. Now with the riots, it's the same mentality. And in New York City right now, I've heard the 7-9 precinct, the 8-8 precinct, there's a RMP that's been set on fire. Um, this stuff whoa, 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 is whoa, 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 Bernie, Bernie, what did you say? The 8-8 precinct, uh, and it's called the 1013, and it's in Brooklyn. The 7-9 in Bed-Stuy. There's they another precinct. Uh, not breached, but they're, they're, they basically have hundreds of protesters there. They have a car on fire in Brooklyn, an RMP, a police car. Um, this stuff is out of control. And really, it's all about the leadership. It's about the mayors. I don't blame those cops in Minneapolis for leaving when they're told to leave by their mayor. I can promise you one thing. Rudy Giuliani would have never told me to leave. And if I left, let me let me go back to the mayor. The Bernie. Mr. Mayor, you've lived oh this. Oh my God! You, what 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 would you be? What what do you, you know, tell I, I these these this. mayors I tonight? I inherited this. Quit, quit. I mean, don't elect progressive Democrats if you want to be safe. That's the message of tonight. Every one of these cities is controlled by people with idiotic policies, friendly to criminals constantly friendly to criminals and completely unfriendly to law-abiding citizens whether they're white black hispanic they are the worst thing that can happen to african-american communities people like this because they suffer more than anyone else and 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 what they've done for the last 20 or 30 years in these communities is outrageous and a lot it's of these outrageous. politicians who have run these communities their families have become millionaires they're also crooks a lot of them and these I saw communities in New York. may never come back. You know, Charlie never... Rangel, Charlie Rangel in Harlem, Charlie Rangel in Harlem, all those years, he ends up a millionaire. And what happens to Harlem? Bernie and I and have to clean it up. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Bernie Kerrig, thank you tonight. We go back to Mike Tobel, we go back to Minneapolis, uh, as things have been heating up there, as you can see. Uh, Mike, 40 minutes ago, this curfew went into effect. Well, I don't see uh, much of a curfew going on. Yeah, uh, whatever they uh, are saying as far as a hard line that they were going to enforce, about 45 minutes ago they announced that uh, they'd be, these people would be in violation of the law. About uh, 20 minutes ago they started uh, offering up the ultimatum. If you stay out here, you are subject to arrest. So uh, what that happened is the uh, police and the National Guard, as you can see, they just withdrew and the demonstrators took off marching, an unplanned march. Now they've gone through some areas, they went from the epicenter of the, of the destruction to some areas that uh, weren't without uh, destruction, but uh, are relatively destruction-free uh, compared. Just a, you know, a little bit of skirmishes, we saw some of the liquor stores that were broken into. And I wanna do something right now, Sean, I wanna walk up on some of these people and see if I can get their viewpoints and uh, see what they're doing out here. Excuse me, pal, uh, let me ask you a question, what are you trying to get done? I'm not going to ask any questions, so I'm not going to ask any questions. All right, fair enough. What about you, buddy? All right. Well, you're out here marching? Are you trying to make a point? What about the order of the curfew? Pass the curfew? 
All right, so I'm not getting a lot of cooperation right now, Sean. But uh, big crowd out here. It seems like the numbers grew with the curfew. You had a lot of people who were looking for a conflict, and they didn't get it. Because once again, the manpower uh, backed down. Sean? Mike, please. Uh, all right, Mike Tobin, uh, we'll let you get resituated. We'll go back to you. Stand by. Uh, Mike is continuing to walk with the crowd. This curfew started nearly 42 minutes ago. Uh, nobody's listening, obviously. We bring in now uh, Dan Bongino, Geraldo Rivera. Uh, Dan, your years of training, you were on the NYPD. Um, you were a Secret Service agent. You, this is what? Now, how many nights in a row are we going to watch the police stand down?